All right, so on this one, it's which one doesn't belong. So what you're gonna do is tell me which one doesn't work with the others. So probably could come up with various reasons. So like, for instance, the first one could be a circle. Hi, friend. This one, it's because it's the only three-sided figure. And this last one isn't really symmetrical. Okay. All right, on this next part, Jennifer draws the rectangle. Find all rotations and reflections that carry the rectangle onto itself. So the best way to describe this is, since it's a rectangle, if I flip it 180 degrees, if I flip it 180 degrees, it would be the same thing. If I flipped it at 360, but most of the time we leave 360 out of the mix, that means that like it wouldn't have rotational symmetry. But since we can flip it 180 degrees and it'll be the same, then that's good. We wouldn't do 90 because it's a rectangle and 90 degrees would make it look like this, which is not like what this picture is, okay? Lisa draws a different rectangle and she finds a larger number of symmetries than Jennifer for her rectangle. What can you conclude about Lisa's rectangle? What you can conclude is that all sides are the same. And that's because if you took like a square, which is technically a rectangle, and you rotated it all the way around, you could rotate it four different ways and get rotational symmetry. So it's gonna be 90 degrees at 180, at 270, and then obviously at 360. Okay. okay, so now you're going to go into Desmos and you should already be logged in for this. Um, you just go to student.desmos.com. So again, student.desmos.com <clears throat> and it should automatically be assigned to you. If you for some reason don't have like the link or whatever, make sure that you go to your Google Classroom and that'll have all of the links for the Desmos activities. Okay. Um, so the warm up, which one doesn't belong? And again, there's no wrong answer. You just have to have an explanation. Okay, for over a thousand years, Islamic art and architecture has used tessellations. A tessellation is a repeating pattern that can fill an entire plane without gaps. See another um, to see some examples. So anything that looks like this. So what are two features that these tessellations have in common? And I want you to write those right here and here. Um, some things you might wanna come up with. Um, it's the same like image repeated. So it's maybe a reflection if you wanna talk about that of the same image. It takes up the whole space might be another one. Okay, so depending on whatever you want to put there. Okay, now let's examine one of the patterns. Choose one of the transformations below and explain where you see that transformation. Okay, so for instance, right here, we could say that we have reflection. Okay, and the best way to say that is to say, hey, there's a line right here in the middle and it reflects across this line. So I can say reflection and it reflects across the middle line between two figures. Okay. You could also say um, translation because you could say from this, you move up to here. That works too. Okay. Just any way to describe it. Okay. Tessellation on the previous screen started with a hexagon. Click show construction. Okay, so we start here. And then we've got all these repeats. How might the dots be useful in creating a design like this? Well, how might the dots be useful in creating a design like this? So the dots might be helpful when you're trying to go from figure to figure. Um, it also might help if you were rotating or reflecting or anything like that. So again, that's what you're writing out. Okay, here's a design with a hexagon. Click the surrounding hexagons to copy and translate the center design.
Then perform as many rotations or reflections as you copied. So that would go there, that would go there, that would go there, there. And then we could rotate things if we wanted to, okay? But obviously it's all the same, all right? Okay. Nina performed a translation followed by a rotation on the center hexagon. This was the result. Could she have used a single transformation to get the same result? So she rotated and there was no point in actually rotating. She could just translate it down. Okay, so could she? Yes. Okay, so from here to here, she could have also just rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise, right? That's actually what happened right here, okay? Because it turned just a little bit. Again, that's what you're writing out. Okay. Now you could challenge one of your classmates. That just means that there has to be at least two people in the class. Okay. And what you can do is sketch on the left and on the right, click on all six neighboring hexagons to copy and transform your design. Okay. So you can create a design. Okay. So coming back to our last slide. I want you to complete this one on your own, um, but I am going to do the first two together and then you can do these last two. Okay, so on the first two, the degree of rotation. So if I took this and I spin it around, okay, how many degrees do I have to spin it in order for it to be identical? Okay, now you've got this little flower petal. Okay, if I spin it just a little bit, it's going to end up lining up with this over here. Okay, so it does have degree of rotation. So, yes. And we can figure it out by saying how many sides are there for this or how many petals are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna take 360 and divide it by the number of sides, which will be um, six. So that'd be 60 degrees. Now with lines of symmetry, you can draw line of symmetry all the way through here. Okay, you can also do it through here, do it through here, or you can do it there. And that's six lines of symmetry. Notice how there's six different petals. <clears throat> okay, degree of rotation. If I take this butterfly and I turn it, well, I would have to turn it completely all the way around in order for me to get the actual same thing. So there's no degree of rotation. But with lines of symmetry, we can divide it straight down the middle. Notice how there's two sides. So you got one line of symmetry. Okay. Now you're gonna do these last two and make sure that you're taking notes on your PowerPoint slides. That way I can see that you're actually looking at the content. If you have any questions, just let me know. Remember tomorrow I've got study hall or you can come to, for tutoring um, at during advisement at 9.15. Please don't come before then. And it's going to be in the comments. Okay. If you have any questions, you can text me on Remind. It takes me a little time to get back to you, but it's faster than email. All right.